I don't think that I'm saying that should go away. Why now are you changing your mind? Man, I, I took some time to really think about it, talk to all the interested parties, and, and get as much uh, kind of details as I can on what I could do here. Uh, and realizing that the Inspector General is working on this, Bega, Bega assured me that they're going to get something out quickly. Uh, I thought maybe our resources would be spent in a different area and we could have more impact on education reform in D.C. Now, if you've been watching Fox 5 for the last couple of weeks, you'll remember this is a he said, she said. The chancellor has said that he believes that he mentioned the transfer of his daughter to the mayor. But the mayor says that's not the case. And in fact, we talked to both of them on Monday night. Here's what they had to say. I had uh, come to Deputy Mayor Niles, which was just earlier, it was just a prior meeting um, earlier in the day. And that Deputy Mayor Niles was working with my wife on transferring my daughter and telling me how to do that. And the mayor thanked me for sharing that information, asked me to keep her informed, and I said okay. At no time did I, it was I told that there was a discretionary transfer. And I'm pretty disappointed that we're kind of talking about uh, one child instead of all the children at DCPS. Now, I should tell you, I did ask Council Member Grasso if the mayor called him to ask him to pull back on this probe. He said the mayor did not call him, but he did reach out to the mayor. And during that conversation, at no point did the mayor talk about or ask him to pull back from this investigation. He did point out to me today that in order to subpoena someone, especially someone that doesn't want to be called to testify, it can take a long time. And he believes that this process may not have transpired before the election, but he does believe that there will be a report by the Board of Ethics that should be coming within the next next month or so also a report from the inspector general but those reports can take a very long time we'll keep you updated on this one live at the wilson building matt ackland fox 5 local news all right talk about a team effort northeastern university women's basketball team had to work together to push their bus out of the snow this is video posted by the team to their twitter account yesterday it shows the bus stuck outside a practice facility in philadelphia after a few big pushes the group was finally able to get that bus moving again out of the snow northeastern was in town to compete with in a ncaa basketball tournament and man mm -hmm. did we luck out with yep the snow yeah. it was a huge difference you know we talked about it all day yesterday because it did impact travel to and from washington but we saw nothing compared to no. two and a half hours up the road digging out of over a foot of snow so and can I we mention by the way that was all women pushing <laughs> this is like international women's day this oh was is, it uh, yes, yes it is so yes, this yep. is you know that's how you celebrate who runs the, fact the world that they all they all did that it was all yeah, ladies i know good for them go ladies yeah. go women international go, go. women's day <laughs> Uh, but back home here, yeah, it has been fairly quiet. Uh, we really did miss out on that last nor'easter. No complaints. I've heard about that. And uh, we've been talking, or at least I've been talking, uh, since yesterday about the potential for another one this weekend. But that looks like less of a chance if you go by guidance today. That could change, but it, at the very least, doesn't look like anything as powerful as just uh, what moved by the northeast. And it's still moving by at this hour, by the way, that nor'easter wrapping up in New England, but still bringing some snow to parts of Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And behind me, we just saw the end to a beautiful day. Nice to have that sunshine with us earlier this morning, although it didn't do much for temperatures. We remain below freezing in the overnight hours into tomorrow morning. That's cold. It'll be a quiet but also chilly Friday, a lot like today. Saturday also looks cool but nice. We'll have a lot of sunshine for Saturday. And then the question mark, it's still got to be there for Sunday. Some models saying yes, we could still see a little bit of snow, maybe some rain. Others saying absolutely not. So uh, even though it looks like less of a chance than yesterday, there's still a chance. Temperatures outside right now, 40 degrees, feels like 33 with that wind out of the northwest, still at about uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour. And temperatures pretty cool. 40 Washington, 43 in Annapolis, 39 Baltimore, 34 Gaithersburg, 36 out at Dulles. A lot of you going to be below freezing tomorrow morning. Wind speeds right now, uh, some of us are calm. The rest of us are starting to taper off. Storm tracker radar, I do want to show some of the snow flurries and rain sprinkles that have moved through uh, late this afternoon with that increased cloud cover. And in fact, a decent snow shower that's just south of Frederick crossing 70 right now, northeast of Damascus. So snowing there and also a bit of a mix just east of 95. This moved through places like Lorton and Dale City and 
rain is now crossing the river into southern Maryland. So some of you, yes, are seeing a little bit of rain and snow that will be moving out shortly. 30 degrees for that overnight low. Look at the 20s. That is a cold morning at the bus stop. And as for Friday itself, I can't rule out another passing flurry as that Northeaster makes its final push out of here. Besides from a passing flurry like we have right now, it'll just be partly cloudy with high temperatures in mainly the 40s. Quick look at that planner. 33, that's cold for the drive-in, but we'll have sunshine and that chilly breeze with a high of 46. AccuWeather seven day forecast, sunny and cool Saturday. One thing that's a guarantee this weekend, we spring ahead or spring forward. I guess it's fall back, spring ahead. Rain and snow still possible Sunday into Monday. Looks dry and chilly for the rest of the week. That's your seven day forecast. Sarah Marina, back over to you. All right. Party is fun, you know, but a party with a purpose is really where it's at. Our Fox 5 crew is throwing a very special happy hour at Tommy Joe's in Bethesda. It's going on right now. That's right. It's all to raise awareness and money for an organization very dear and near to our Fox 5 family, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Fox 5, Sean Yancey leading the troops behind the bar there tonight. Hey, Sean. Hey, Marina. Hey, Sarah. This has been an incredible night, and we are so grateful for everyone who's come down to support tonight. I want to introduce you to one of the big supporters tonight. This is Scott and Leslie Weir. You guys not only donated a package for the silent auction tonight, but you have another more personal reason for supporting LLS. Tell me about it. Yeah, my father died of a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma about eight years ago, and uh, we were always big supporters of LLS even before that, but they do such great work with research and really making some great progress in the cancer. So we're just pleased to help out any way we can. And what do you want our viewers out there to know about this incredible organization? Uh, just like anything, I mean, we're so blessed as Americans. We have so much. Just try to give back. I mean, just charity is a wonderful thing. It makes you feel good. Absolutely. And, and Leslie just wanted to be here for his moral support. I thank you both so much for coming out, and thank you for your donation yeah, tonight. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, All right. Well, let me take you and show you what else is going on. If we can get Brody Logan to run interference here, you know, he's the sports guy. He's going to run interference to the crowd for us tonight. I want to show you what's going on. The, the party continues. And